This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. I'm so, so, so excited for, for having this uh, fantastic class. It's, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's impossible to describe my feelings about it. We're crossing the country and we're, we're coming from one state to the next and you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to meet a few more of my students and more of my students and like to think that faces that, uh, that I know for so many years and for so long and only from Facebook and only from WhatsApp and only from emails and, and, and suddenly you see the people, you see the souls that are coming and driving for such long distance just uh, like, uh, thank God for friendship. Thank God for, for this amazing bonding and, and, and friendship that, uh, that we have between us. And um, when I'm thinking about that connection, about that amazing connection, I'm asking myself, based on what? Based on what we are such good friends that we're traveling for such great distance to meet each other. And there is only one thing that is coming in my mind and it's the honesty that I'm sharing while telling my journey and it's that honesty that is being reflected to me by my honest students. I can see that in the eyes of all of you guys that are traveling so far and coming that like the Creator is telling us inside my people I live, I stay can see that glimpse, can see that spark in your eyes when you're coming, when I see you it's, uh, it's warming my heart it's giving me a lot of strength, a lot of power to, to continue in, in, in our magnificent journey from heaven the Creator is putting in my heart every time to give those speeches that will speak to all of my beloved ones, to all of you people. And the question is why that message is talking to everyone that we can, pe we can see people from four wings of the universe that are coming and everyone are so different and everyone are so like with different backgrounds and, and with, with different reasons coming and joining. And how can it be that the message fits to everyone? How come? Because the Creator is revealing His light. And the purpose of this creation is to reveal the light of mercy. Light of mercy is light that is coming down to souls, not because of their merit, because of their rights, because that they are so high and unique and important, just because of the endless love of the Creator, the unconditional love of a parent to his children. Now the Creator is such a loving Father, He loves us so much that He is giving to us not only things that He owns, like wealth, like health, like happiness. The Creator is delivering Himself to us. When the Creator wanted to give from His good to His people, He was thinking to Himself, what can be that good, the best, the highest quality good that I can give to my children? And then He said, I will give the good itself. I will give the essence of good. The highest level of good is the source of good. And who is the source of good? The Creator Himself. He decided to give Himself to His children. Like that a parent, when, my, when people, students of mine, friends of mine are telling me, your children look like you, they're learning from you, whatever good things that they're telling me, I'm asking always from heaven, from Hashem, that my kids will receive the good that is inside of me. And the Creator, that He is all good, when He is giving Himself out to His children, 
the amounts of bounty, the greatness of this gift that we've been blessed with, that we are about to understand what it means, how great, how large, how huge it is to receive the Creator Himself. What does it mean? It's so huge, it's so big, it's so giant. But the Creator is handing this gift to each and every one of us. Every person can climb to the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, of our ancestors. From a tree of apples, you will never going to see oranges coming out to the world, only apples. From those holy ancestors, the pillars of the world, only fruits that are similar to them are coming to the world. And the holy tribes of Israel, the twelve tribes are all holy and pure and amazing and fantastic. And with the attributes of our ancestors, of the fathers and the mothers, and even if we cannot recognize it, even if we cannot see it when we're looking at the mirror, we cannot recognize Abram, we cannot, it's hard. Even if your name is Sarah, your name is Rachel, it's hard to recognize that Holy Mother. You know why? Because you look at your physicality and you don't know exactly how Sarah looked like 4,000 years ago. And you think to yourself, oh, I'm not as righteous. But the truth is that you still don't know what you're made of. Because inside of you there is a portion of heaven. And that portion of heaven, it's that chelek eloka mimal. It's your soul. And your soul is divine and godly. And if you are now doubting that godliness, and if you don't appreciate that portion of heaven that lives inside of you, it's only because that your self-esteem is low. It's only because that you accepted foreign and negative words about yourself, that Lashon Ara, negative and bad tongue, bad words that have been said about you, you accepted it, and you are now thinking bad things about yourself. But am I allowed to hear negative things about you? No. And if someone going to tell me that you are evil, that you are worthless, that you're hopeless, that you're done, that you're finished, that you're not good, am I allowed to accept it? No. Why? Because it's a lie. Because all negative words that are coming out on a person are based as lie. They're all lie. Why? Because they're coming from the snake, the evil inclination. Their source is not the source of truth, the source of good. But if I'm going to hear compliments about you, that you're amazing, that you're a fantastic guy, that you're good, that you are gentle, that you're sensitive, that you're wise, am I allowed to accept it? Yes, of course. Why? Because the source of those words is coming from a source of truth, from the good itself, from Hashem, and not from the darkness, not from the evil inclination. So I'm allowed to accept it. But you might not be such a genius like you have been described. And you might not be such evil like the evil inclination said about you. But even though that you are not answering to that description completely in the positive and in the negative side, I am obligated to follow the positive opinions about you because they're coming from an honest place and they're for sure true. How can it be that they're for sure true? If you know about yourself that you're full of lackings, because you still don't know who you are. Because you're judging yourself based on your physicality, on your figure, on your portrait, on your size, on your weight, on your colors, on your accent, on the family that you came from. And you don't know that you are not that physical body at all. Because you are your soul and you're not the vehicle that is carrying your soul from one place to the other. You are your soul. You are your spirit. You're not your body. And when you're holding yourself as a body, when you think that you are a physical body, flesh and bones, in that moment you lose your connection to your true, to your real identity. That you are a holy soul. That its source is under the throne of honor. 
and all souls of Israel are like those. And if you think to yourself, hey, but I'm not Jewish, maybe I'm not part of those souls of Israel, I'm going to tell you a little bit, we're going to learn a little bit of math today. There were 12 tribes, not only the tribe of Judah. The Jewish people today are one tribe out of 12. Few more individuals joined the tribe of Judah when the separation took place thousands of years ago. But all the rest of tribes are in the exile and you cannot recognize them. You don't know who they are. Now it doesn't mean that they are Jewish, no. But they are Israelis. And when their redemption will take place and the spirit of Mashiach going to hover above the world and the souls will wake up to recognize their true colors and to understand who they really are, hundreds of millions of people going to identify as Israeli people. Because they are. Because in the roots of their families, they belong to the holy tribes of Issachar, Zvulun, Reuven, Gad, Naphtali, Shimon, and on and on and on and on. Twelve tribes. If the Jewish people wouldn't experience the horrible decrees that millions of our people been executed, killed and died during the years of exile, Today we would be a nation of more than 50 million people. And every one of the tribe is holding at least that amount of people. You're talking about hundreds of millions of people that in one moment their spirit will turn to a positive direction. And they're all going to recognize their inner love and passion to the Torah and to Hashem and to Israel and to Jerusalem and to the temple and to the truth. And the world will turn into the right direction. And there's going to be a revolution and those are the days of redemption. Who am I that is standing in front of you and talking? I'm a person, and my friend here can testify, that started his path from complete ignorance about Judaism. I am Jewish in my family. We came, were coming from a Jewish family. But we were not keeping the tradition. We were not keeping Shabbat. We were not eating kosher food. We were not observant at all. The synagogue that had been chosen for me to have a bar mitzvah at was the only synagogue that allowed women to sit in the men's section. That's why my parents chose that Beit Knesset. We were so far that my mother refused to sit in the women's section. That was the reason why they chose that Bet Knesset for me to have a bar mitzvah. And so far we were. I put tefillin once in my bar mitzvah. And when I turned 20 and I wanted to start putting tefillin, it was the first time in my life that I heard that you should put your tefillin not only in the bar mitzvah. Because I thought that feeling you put in the bar mitzvah and that is, that's it. And then you put them in the closet. I didn't know that a man, every child from age of 13 is supposed to put feeling. I didn't know those things. And the Creator decided to reveal His endless love to me and to open my eyes, not because of my righteousness, not because of my holiness, because I was in a different direction. I was clubbing, and I was violating Shabbos, and I was eating treif, and I was sinning. Because I lived secular life. And the Creator saw inside of me something that He could recognize. But people couldn't recognize that good. You couldn't recognize that good in me because I was so far. Because the exile drifted me away from purity, from holy customs, from good behaviors. I was far. I was driving my bike, driving my jeep. I would do many crazy things. But the Creator revealed His loving kindness on me and opened my eyes to recognize His existence. And He made me to be a Baal Tshuva. Now, as a Baal Tshuva, I know completely, with no doubt about it, that only His endless love brought me back to His path to serve Him. And not the goodness of my deeds, of my actions. Thank you for coming. Only His endless love to me 
Now that love that's been shown to me, that's been revealed to me, been shown to me only corresponding to His endless mercy. And mercy, like we said in the beginning, is not to give something to someone that's worth it, that deserve it. Mercy is to give some good thing to someone that does not deserve that good thing. Someone that you don't owe him anything and you choose to give him charity. That's an act of kindness. That's an act of mercy. So when I know about myself that the only reason that I started to recognize godliness and Hashem and chose the rules of the Torah to follow completely with no doubts, without moving to the right or to the left from what the Torah is commanding you, came to me only as a gift, free gift from heaven, as a result of His loving kindness and mercy, not because I was worthy, just because that He loved me so much to choose me to open my eyes. Now, if He chose me, and not because of the goodness of my deeds, just because of His love to me, so it's a clear evidence for me that that love exists for every individual in the world, no matter who He is. And that's the purpose of this creation. That the Creator created this world only to reveal His mercy. To show that He loves even who that does not love Him back. That He supports even those ones that does not support Him. That He cares, that He loves, that He respects, that He honors. Even the Egyptians that were running to kill, chasing to kill the Israeli people. When we crossed the sea, when they were drowning in the sea, the angels tried to praise Hashem, to tell Him, thank you for saving your people. Hashem said, when my creations now are drowning in the sea, you're praising me. The Creator is never happy when people die, when people suffer. The Creator wants to see everyone happy. Everyone blooming and succeeding and growing and going wiser and getting more pure and more holy and that everyone will be healthy and wealthy. That's the greatness and the greatest honor of the King that all of His creations will serve Him and will call Him in His name. And that's going to be the result of the redemption, of the complete salvation of the wide world that all the nations going to be turned to be one unit that serves Hashem. Like we're saying in our prayers in Rosh Hashanah and in Yom Kippur, that everyone will serve you together. Like that Hashem told us, that in that day, the house of Hashem will be the house of prayer to all nations. And you, the nation of Israel, who are you going to be? Mamlechet Kohanim Vegoi Kadosh. You're going to be a kingship of servants. You will be those ones to guide the nations, to teach them the rules, how to serve the Creator, how to keep the Torah and the mitzvot, how to believe in Him and how to follow Him. For that, we need to fix our nature. As a nation of servants, we should become lighthouses to the world. To shine the light of kindness, the light of truth, the light of respect and all good attributes to the wide world. That every person in the universe that will see us is going to recognize that we are a family that has been blessed by Hashem. And that our arms will be open to hug and to accept and to build and strengthen every person in the universe. You should have mercy on all of Hashem creations. Because His love is on all of His creation. And the love and the appreciation and gratitude of the Creator to those ones that will go and shine the world with the light of faith is something that we cannot even dream of. We cannot understand the greatness of His appreciation. How much He is waiting for those holy moments that we will get serious on it.
to go and to spread the Torah, to go and to distribute the light of truth, the light of Hashem between people and to teach every person to climb and to grow in his own way. You need to teach the child according to his way, to his ability. If that person now, he's a Gentile, he's a non-Jew, and he's asking you questions about Hashem, you don't need to tell him, okay, now you're Jewish, welcome to our community. No. You need to tell him, listen, you have work to do. You have your job, find yourself. Find who you are, your qualities, what you're made of, what's your mission, how can you reveal the good of the Creator to the world. He's not Jewish. You don't need to make him Jewish. You don't need to convert every person. It's not a desire or lust to convert people. If you see a person that his spirit, that his heart is coming out of his body, he wants to convert, he wants to keep Torah, he wants to put filin, Shabbat for him is the center of his life. Okay, you can guide him in that path as well. But not everyone should be similar. Not everyone should be the same. Every person been created in the shape of heaven, in the shape of God, Betzalmo, in his spiritual shape. Means that inside of every human being there is a spark of heaven, spark of God. And you should teach and guide and support people to find, to recognize that spark that lives inside of them and to help them to climb back to who they really are. And not to try to change them or to convert them or to uplift them. You just need to help them to recognize their true selves, who you really are. What are your qualities? In what you've been blessed and gifted? Because you've been gifted in things that I cannot recognize in myself. I don't know that I have your qualities, your talents, your abilities. You can rhyme, you can run, you can sing, you can work, you can think, you have an amazing memory. You, you have, I don't know what. You have the powers that have been treasured inside of you. And that's the reason and purpose of your creation. To reveal that godliness that has been treasured inside of you to the wide world. To expand the good that has been given to you among your beloved ones. The ones that are close to you. The ones that are related to you. The ones that will accept from you. The ones that will listen to you. That respects you. You're obligated to give that good that lives inside of you to those people around you. And if you have a large, huge mission, so your light going to expand thousands of miles. And if you have a simple but deep and meaningful mission, you can save lives of few individuals. And if you save the life of one person, so it counts and means like you save the wide world. Because every one person, you can never know who he is. You can never know who and how important that person is. You can think that he's such a, I don't know, low life, a simple person, can't understand him, he's not so wise, not so talented. You don't know who he is. You don't know which holy soul he carry within. You don't know in which blessings and which ancestors, the holy ancestors are backing him up with, he, with their prayers. You don't know. A respectful person is a person that is respecting everyone. An honorable person is a person that running away from the honor and going to honor other people. And a wise person is not someone that read hundreds of books or thousands of bookcases. No. Only a person that is willing to learn from everyone. A person that is open-minded to listen, to hear. Even wisdom that is coming from the nations. Even wisdom that is coming from people that never learned Torah. They can teach you some deep classes in life. They can wake your eyes up to recognize a lot of truth. I have good friends, holy and amazing friends that are not Jewish. And they're amazing people. And I appreciate them and I love them and I admire them. And I know that they are carrying holy sparks within. 
And if you cannot recognize that godliness that is treasured inside of them, it means only one thing, that you should work on your eyes. That you should try to see deeper. That you should try to recognize godliness that is treasured inside of things. To try to respect more. To try to listen more. To be more careful. To be more open, more sensitive. You see now an apple. A person can say what that apple is. It's nothing. That apple in different days, 70 years ago in the Holocaust, in days of hunger, days of, 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 of plagues, one apple could save a life of a person. But you now, for you, when you're so satisfied and you just finished your barbecue and came to a Torah class, it's a problem. What's the problem? That you cannot appreciate that apple. But that apple, the Creator obligated you to say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Bore Peri Ha'etz on it. To say a blessing on it. Why? To remind you that that is a godly apple. That's not a simple apple. That's not a regular fruit. It's not only juice and fibers with a peel in a certain color and sweetness. No, no, no. It holds holy sparks in it. Spirits, nefashot. And when you say that blessing, and you give that small bite in that apple, you're rising those sparks to heaven. You're rising and changing the world with your bite, with your blessing, with your eating, while grinding it with your 32 teeth. If you still have those 32 teeth. But you can rise it with your China ones, it's okay. You can, you can still uplift those sparks, no worries. 32 teeth, you know why? Because the numeral value of, of, of the teeth, 32, is equal to the word heart, live, in Hebrew, in the ancient language that is teaching to us the secrets of the Torah, the wisdom and purpose and meaning of Hashem in creating His world. And with those teeth, when you're grinding the apple with your teeth, when you're grinding the food and you're digesting the positive part, the sparks with your heart, you are uplifting all the sparks back to heaven. And when you see a situation, when you're coming in search, certain reactions in life, when you meet people, when you talk and you have a heart, so that heart is that tool to uplift the sparks in every situation. You need to work on your heart, to have that holy heart, to have that pure heart, to sense and to understand. And by that every situation won't be a simple situation anymore. Every moment of your life will become a holy and godly moment. And you can live eternal life with the Creator. And to reveal His godliness to millions of people. And if you would ask, who am I? But I know myself. I'm so low. I'm so lazy. I'm lying. And I have so many scams and filthy thoughts. And I'm sinning on daily basis. And talking Lashon Ara. And being so dumb so many times in my life. And I forget from right to left. And I don't know. I'm like nothing. I'm just like I'm working and I'm busy. That's what you think about yourself. But the Creator, He loves you so much. That He gave you such miracles in your life that you cannot understand. That you cannot evaluate. That you cannot grasp with your mind what a huge miracle it is. Just the fact that you're alive right now. He saved your life so many times and He brought you to that moment. And He gave you your soul back this morning and every morning before. And He gives you life and He created and built you in a way that you will be able to digest food and to breathe clear air and to take out the oxygen. No one can make those machines. A heart that is cleaning the blood and a body that made out of such amazing systems of muscles and bones and joints that no person in the world can create such a fantastic and complex machine. And He gave that machine in your hand. That you will be so powerful. That you will be so useful. 
that you will use your hands and use your feet, use your eyes and use your nose, use your heart, use your ears, use your mind. You know in the power of the mind what we can achieve, in the power of prayer what we can achieve. But for that you need to use your mind, you need to use your heart, you need to remind yourself that you have a heart, that the heart is the organ that you should sense with, that you should care with, that you should love with, that you have your mind, that you should use the power of your mind to look for far, to look to the distance, to recognize the purpose in your life, to be more than what your body demands from you, to have a vision, to execute your dreams, to make the dreams of your beloved ones come true, to fight for the weak and for the poor, to save lives of people. It's written, charity will save from death. I said it many times in my classes. Just to arouse the power of our imagination, realizing the greatness of the gift that the Creator gave to us. Now, if a person gives charity, he saves life. Not because the charity was so huge and large, just because that the Creator set that rule in the world. He said, Tzedakah tatzil mimavet. You give charity, you save from death. That's it. It's a verse. It's a done deal. It's a rule of nature. That's how it works. Now, for an example, if you give $100 bill for charity, amazing thing, you might save the life of a person. But if you gave one cent, for an example, is it charity? Now we'll take one cent and putting it in the charity box. One cent, one dime, you put it in the, was it charity? The name charity is written under that act? Charity, it is. It's going to save from death. Someone in the world, it's going to save from death. It can be physical death, it can be spiritual death, it can be a death of a person, it can be a death of an animal, a squirrel, a butterfly, I don't know. It depends maybe in the privilege that you had, in the merit that you had, in the intention that you had, but you, while giving charity, will not be able to break that rule that the Creator set that charity will save from death. Now how rich you are that by giving one cent you're gonna save life. Another cent, another life. Another cent, another life. Another cent, one cent, one coin. You will save lives on lives, on lives, on lives. And when you pray, and when you're learning Torah, and when you help a person, and when you are doing tshuva, and you confess on your mistakes, and when you make a favor with your friend, and when you just help a person to cross the street, by doing that you're changing the world. Because you are not only a physical body, you're not only that person that helped that guy to cross the street, you are much more than that. Because inside of you, like we said before, there are spiritual wires that are connecting us all from within. And when you are uplifting yourself by doing something good, you are rising and uplifting the wide world with you. When you're helping a person, feeding a poor, when you're supporting a, a good act, a, a good organization, when you're learning Torah, when you're reading one verse, you're saving lives from within. The light that you are creating with your good action is pulling spiritual ropes from inside and moving things in heaven. And huge changes are happening in the world. You don't know who you are. Maybe your good actions brought me to do tshuva 20 years ago and you don't know. Maybe your good actions saved my, li my life or my friends or my child life five years ago and we don't know it. You don't know because Hashem is not telling. Because the ways of the Creator are mysterious and hidden. And we cannot know them all. We cannot recognize them all. Why? Because we are still stuck with the eyes of our flesh and bones, with our physical eyes. But if you will let your mind work, if you will let your heart work, if you will count on your faith, on your belief, 
you will understand that the Creator is running the show in a wonderful and amazing and fantastic way. And He is running the wills and making changes that are waking up souls from complete darkness. And thousands of thousands of people are coming back to their source, to the Creator Himself. We're talking about thousands of people and maybe even hundreds of thousands that are watching classes of Torah online, that are ordering books of Torah and learning from the wisdom of God, that are dropping their false faiths, faiths in different religions and different methods that they've been taught in their childhood and choosing the truth and following the truth and choosing the Creator to be the pillar of light in the center of their life in front of the camp and following Him with passion. And I'm receiving thousands on thousands of emails and messages and comments on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and SoundCloud and, and Instagram and all the rest of those crazy outlets that I don't even know how to find them with my iPhone. But I do receive them by my loyal helpers that are helping me to function in this crazy world. And all those people are testifying that they are thirsty to hear the words of Hashem. And that they are so thirsty and willing to change and revealing their own honest heart and their pure intentions. And we should understand that and should give ourselves that support and that respect for being who we are. For being who we are to be those truth seekers that are going and seeking for Hashem. Thousands of people started their tshuva following Rabbi Google online. Asking him questions about their identity. Asking halachic questions from Google and receiving answers from complete lack of knowledge, lack of awareness, from complete darkness, choosing the light of Hashem. And one step after the next, one mile after the other, making huge changes in the world. And when you let yourself change, give yourself a chance, when you're choosing life, by that you become a good example to all those ones that are around you. You become a role model, you become light to the nations, light to the world. And people can learn from you what they can learn from you. They can learn from you how to find themselves, like that you found your true self. That's what they will find, their true selves. We're not here to change no one. We're not here to convince and not to force and not to move no one from its place. Just to remind you of your true nature. Of you as a spiritual creation and not only a physical body that is going through things in life. You have a spiritual purpose. There is a cause and a reason for your nature. For the challenges that you went through and been through in life. And in the secret of your creation, why the Creator made you to be exactly who you are, coming from that section, from that part of the world, talking that language, have those friends, that family, belong to that community, that is part of your purpose. To reveal the light of Hashem, the true God above us, in your place to your people, to your surroundings, that every one of them going to recognize the inner light of godliness that is treasured inside of him in the secret of his creation and that he will function corresponding to his mission to be who he is and to follow the blessing that he been blessed with and to follow the light of Hashem. You don't need to change to follow Hashem. Hashem is following you even to the most impure places in the world, to the lowest places in the world, betoch ami anochi yoshavet. Shochen itam betoch tumotam. He is with us in the most impure places. Even when mar our mind is off, even when our thoughts are so distracted, even when we're lost and confused and we don't know which direction to take, 
the Creator is shining His light upon us. And He is delivering those sparks of life through our food and through our drinks and through books that we're reading and even through music that we hear and movies that we see. The Creator is speaking. The creation is speaking and talking to us. Righteous people from earlier generations testify on that. That you can hear the conversation of the palm trees. That the spirits are talking at night. But every person felt and experienced it also today. You felt the presence of Hashem in your life. You saw wonders and miracles in your life. You recognize that individual supervision, Hashgacha Pratit, on your life so many times. Even when you pray to buy a house, and in the same moment that you ask, Hashem, give me a house, I don't have money, I need money to buy a house, and you see one coin on the floor, I know, it's a joke. You cannot buy a house with a coin, but it gives some light to your soul. Still you say, hey, I just pray for money, and here I found some. Something was talking to me from the ground. The truth is growing from the earth. Emet me'eretz titzmach. And when you recognize that godliness that is bringing the right people to your path and bringing the right books to your table and bringing the right message to your ears and opening your eyes to recognize the truth one step after the other to heal you based on your location, on your ability, on your power, on your capacity. By that you understand how merciful the Creator is. To send the right amounts to you, to feed you based on your power and your ability to receive. Like that you feed your child with different food that you're going to feed him when he will be 18. It's a different way of education. So now in your place, in the path of serving the Creator, you are being fed with certain things. You should be happy in that. You should accept it, appreciate it, love it, and accept and hug it, and like it, and honor and respect and appreciate it, because that's the spiritual food that is healthy for you right now. Even if you're not able to keep all Torah mitzvot, even if you're not able to run and wake up before of dawn and to go to sleep after midnight and reading all those pages that need to be read every day, even if you cannot sit and learn so many hours, if you cannot do one or six hours, hit bodedut every day like those crazy rabbis that are able to do those wonderful things. Okay. You don't have that power. It doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you worthless. It doesn't make you even weak. It just makes you in a certain position. Even a righteous man that will be held in prison won't be able to keep Shabbat like the rules of Judaism, won't be able to put fill in if he doesn't have them. You are a result of the exile of thousands of years of exile. And after 2,000 years of darkness, a person carries some scars, some wounds that he's been wounded with, some pain, some weaknesses, some traumas, and they're affecting your life. But it doesn't mean that it's your fault. It's your journey not to give up on your goal, on your purpose. Not to give up on your faith, not to give up on the truth, not to give up on love, not to give up on justice, not to give up on your faith in the Creator. That's our purpose, not to give up. To make one more step toward Hashem. Every day make one step. Make one good thing today. When I started my tshuva, I didn't have the power to keep all Torah and mitzvot that I'm able to keep today. And also today, I believe that there are more things that I will be able to do tomorrow, things that I'm not aware of even maybe today. And tomorrow I'm going to learn them. In the nearest future, I'm going to climb to those levels. But today, I'm only holding in the level that I am today. Back in those days, 20 years ago, when I started my tshuva process, I didn't have in my mind the time even to put fill in every day, to go and do hit bodedu, to talk to Hashem every day, to learn Torah every day. I didn't feel that I have the power to do it every day. 
So what did I do? I decided that every day I'm going to do one good thing in that path, in that way. And one day I put filin. In the second day, I went to a spring, to a, to a lake, and I dipped in that water source. In a different day, I made a meditation. I was doing Hidbodadu, talking to Hashem. In a different day, I went to a synagogue and I said, I prayed Mincha. One day, I went to the Western Wall and I was talking to Hashem over there or saying Tehillim. Every day, I did something good based on my power. Based on my understanding what is good. It could have been that one day I would just go and eat healthy food. For those days, it was the things that were needed and required for me. You don't know what is needed and required for your journey. You should connect yourself to the truth. To be as honest as you can. To be as truthful as you're able to be. And to follow the light of truth that is shining within. And then to follow your heart and to go and seek for Hashem, to go and seek for the truth, to go and seek for the Torah. And every day to climb and to achieve another level while trying the best you can to serve Hashem, to come closer to the nature of your creation, to be who you've been sent to be, to follow the light of your soul. And I recognize that in my students. I recognize that light in my honest students, that they are all seeking for the truth. And I want to tell you one thing. When you hear a lecture from a rabbi, and he's talking words of wisdom, not from, only from rabbis, every wise person that he's talking, and you recognize wisdom in his speech, and you appreciate his words, I want to tell you something. If you would hear another person that is talking, but he would talk on a different subject, something that you not relate to, would you enjoy his speech? No, you wouldn't. Because you don't know anything about those concepts that that other guy is talking about. You relate to things that are related to you. Means that if you recognize a certain wisdom from the mouth of a wise person, it means that it reflects your inner wisdom. It links into the roots and the spirit of your soul. It means that that speaker, that rabbi, is connected to you in the roots of your soul, in the roots of your spirit. And you are him, are one in the root. You are one in the wisdom, in the essence, and in the purpose. And that's why you should hold hands together. And to make one front line in that war and battle against darkness and the evil inclination. And we are in it to win it. Because Hashem is on our side. Because the spirit of Mashiach is hovering above the water. And the water are available for everyone to drink. The Torah is saying, if you're thirsty, go to the water. means that the water are available. Open a book of Torah. Open a book that's been written by a righteous man. Open and search for some good classes on social media. You're going to find what your heart was desiring because the Spirit of Hashem is going to guide you to the asked result, to what that your heart desires. He will back you up. He will support your path. He will guide you all to the path of truth and will build the third temple in our days only with happiness and full of gratitude. With a happy heart we'll see it and gonna be there and bless Hashem with a happy heart and a wishing soul soon in our days. Amen. Ken Yehiratzon. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.